Hello, I'm Landon Schlungen, and today we're going to be going into debugging on FreeCodeCamp. And what debugging is, is trying to find errors in your code and making sure it runs right. So if there is an error, we can use debugging to try and find what the error is. There are three main types of errors. Syntax errors, which is where like this needs a bracket to work. There's runtime errors where once you run it, you'll realize, oh, this probably shouldn't be true all the time. Otherwise, it'll be an infinite loop. Or there's semantic or logical errors when code doesn't do what it's meant to do. And that's an example of this where calculate area of rectangle. It should be with time height, but they have it as with plus height. And usually we see that once we test it more then we'll figure out that that's wrong. These two are harder to spot than the syntax error because syntax errors, we usually have linters that can recognize when there's a syntax error, but these two are harder to find. Um, but yeah, let's just go on to the first lesson. Use the JavaScript console to check the value of a variable. So console.log is a really powerful debugging tool. Uh, I've been using it a little bit in my videos. So here we know that a is six when we console log it, and then we console log some a, b which would be six plus one, which is seven. So that seems right. So let's run it. Yep. Understanding the differences between the free code camp and browser console. If we were to check the browser console by doing right click inspect and we check the console here, then we would see a lot more of the console logs that we put. So for example, if I console log this output, then we get that here. And then if I test it again, then it outputs more times. And the way we can clear it is by doing console.clear like that. And now the console, the browser console is cleared, but not the free code camp one. So let's run that. There we go. Use type of to check the type of a variable. So here we'll just console log these two variables with type of. So there we did type of seven, type of three. The type of seven is a number. The type of three is a string, which seems correct. So let's run that. Yep. Catch misspelled variable and function names. Here, receivables is not the same as receivables over here, and we need to fix the spelling. So we'll go EI for receivables, and payables is not the same as payable, so we'll go payables. And now networking capital works. Let's run that. There we go. Catch unclosed parentheses, brackets, braces, and quotes. Here we want to fix the two pairs pair errors in the code. So here we need a square bracket, and here we need an extra parenthesis. And there now it works. Let's run that. Yep. Catched mixed usage of single and double quotes. Here we want to change these double quotes to single quotes so that it works. And there we go. Run that. Yep. Catch use of assignment operator instead of equality operator. Here we're assigning x to y, but we actually want to compare them. So that's actually double equal sign. And that should work now. Yep. Catch missing open and closing parentheses after a function call. Here we're calling get nine, but we don't have the two parentheses at the end, so it's not actually running. We actually have to put the parentheses at the end to call that function, and now it should work. Yep. Catch arguments passed in the wrong order when calling a function. Here the base is the one we should call first, and exponent is the one that should be put second. So when we called it, we should actually switch these around, base and exponent, because order matters in the argument list. And now it's eight, which is correct. Let's run that. Yep. Catch off by one errors when using indexing. So we have to remember when indexing, it starts at zero. So here we want to have i equals zero first so that it gets one. And then we want it to be i less than length, not less than or equal to. And let's try that. Yep. Use caution when reinitializing variables inside a, a loop. Here we want it so that it has m number of columns or m rows and n number of columns. And right now it looks like this, which is incorrect because we're passing in three and two. So what we want to do is we want to move this let row down here. And now it's correct because when it wasn't being reinitialized, then it just kept pushing zeros on to what was already there. But now it's a new array every time that gets pushed and it should work now. Yep. Prevent infinite loops with a valid terminal condition. This is a big deal with while loops. Not really with for loops, but um, with while loops, you want to make sure that doesn't have an infinite loop. So we can fix this loop by doing i less than or equal to 4, because i not equal to 4, it would just skip right over it. It would go 1, then 3, then 5. But less than or equal to 4, it'll stop when it hits 5. So let's run that. Yep. And there we go. We already completed the debugging challenges of Free Code Camp. Next up, we're going to do introduction to the basic data structure challenges. So I'll see you then, and until next time, see ya.